picks up and goes. Oh yeah. <laughs> the power flow is really linear. Yeah, I mean, you. I'm not gonna ask you about gas mileage, but... Oh, yeah, gas mileage. <laughs> <laughs> Let's not go into gas mileage. Yeah, I mean, it's a V8, so it's gonna burn gas, but... No, I said it's a healthy 350, it's got the RV cam on it, and uh, especially with the Holley Sniper, it, it, like, I have to be very careful with this pedal, because it, I'll spin those tires, you know? Mm -hmm. And then with the 700 R4, too, you know, it gets up and goes. And I'm on the highway like nothing, especially with these smaller tires, it helps out having that extra mm -hmm. gear and overdrive. And this car has a lot of uh, visibility. Uh, you mentioned that you have a 49 fleet line? 48. 48 fleet line. Yeah. That one is like a... You're like, you know, a <laughs> shell. You know what I mean? It's like a horse with the things, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, we're here, you got a lot, lot of view. You know what I mean? So it's... it's, it's uh, I'm more comfortable in that thing. Yeah. You know, like driving a 48, you you really got to be looking out your windows and your mirrors before you switch that, make that lane switch. All right, everyone. Welcome back to Automotive Anatomy. Today we have the pleasure of having Frankie. Frankie, thank you so much for making the time for us, man. Tell us, oh, what yeah. do you drive? Uh, well, I drive a 1964 Chevrolet Impala Super Sport. And this is officially the oldest car, the most classic car, I should say, that we feature on the, on, on the channel. And, and everybody that follows the channel knows the soft spot that I have for Impala, especially the 63, the 64. But anyways, before we start into uh, this beautiful build, tell us a little bit about yourself. Like, when do you remember thinking, ah, I like cars, I think this is gonna be my hobby. Uh, I kind of grew up around it, like uh, my uncles, they've always had cars and anytime we get together, family get togethers, they had a different car. Mm. Uh, they were mostly like to the bomb scene, you know, oh, okay, low okay. riders, uh, you know, 60s, 70s type stuff. Okay. So I fell in love with it since, since way back when. And so it was bombs for them? Bombs for them for the most part, gotcha. yeah. Gotcha. Okay, okay. And so as you're growing up, when do you get introduced to the Impala? Well, <laughs> the Impala came along in my life when I was about... I want to say maybe six years old. Uh, my parents had one, a 64 Impala Super Sport, just like this one. And uh, yeah, you know, when, when you're a kid, car's a car, but that one woke me up and they, you know, this is a car, right? And there was a lot of stories and history that came along with that one. You know, my, my dad actually picked it up from my grandfather, which was his father-in-law. Um, the car originally belonged to my grandfather's sister. She bought it brand new, passed away, left it to him. One night, my dad and my grandpa are drinking and talking, and my dad <laughs> offers him a little bit of money for it, and he took it. So the very next day, he went over there, got it running, and, and took it home. No, no backseats, right? right yeah, no, it was sitting there for I a wasn't bit. that drunk. <laughs> <laughs> so he picks up the car. Yeah. Man. Yeah. Now you look back, and you're like, man, that was a pretty cool car to have. It but, was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I said, there's a lot of good stories with it. Uh, we used to do, uh, after we got it painted, we spent like a good week in Tijuana. You know, my parents, me and my sisters, we were little, just to get it painted and reupholstered and everything. So they painted it a red, had the black interior redone. And uh, officially it was my mom's car. Okay, you know, okay. My dad you know, did all the work and drove it and everything too. And uh, I remember when I was little with my mom, we'd do uh, Meals on Wheels. I don't know if anybody remembers Meals on Wheels. <laughs> and we did it in the Impala. You know, <laughs> that's you wild. Yeah, you deliver food to old people, and they would they would trip out. They would trip out. And I, you know, I rem remember all of that. You know, it was, it was wow. cool the reactions you get in, in these cars. Man, so your dad was into modifying cars himself then? Not really. He, oh, okay. He worked on cars that <clears throat> a necessity. You know, the cars mm. got to be running and driving to get to work the next day. You know, oh, we really didn't have the money to gotcha. be modifying them a whole lot, you know? Oh, okay. Yeah. But that one specifically, yes, they, they wanted to make it nice because yeah. it was for mom, right? Exactly. So gotcha. they, that one they kept original. It was just gotcha. original, yeah. Okay. And then obviously they didn't give you that car. This is not the same car, uh, no, sadly. I wish, I wish they would have <laughs> kept that one. But that one, um, so you know, my mom's, you know, light skin, darker hair. So she doesn't fully look Hispanic if you look, look at it right away. So she really didn't have too many issues. But unfortunately, when my dad drove it, he, he had a lot of issues, especially back then, you mm -hmm. know? Not, you know, just, just from other raza, but mm -hmm. also, you know, law Line enforcement. Line enforcement, yeah, exactly. yes, we yeah. know how that goes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, matter of fact, when we had it painted, crossing back in, into the United States, 
they had us there for a couple hours taking the panels apart and wow. checking it you know the random stops yeah, that yeah. they do yeah yeah Man. so there was issues they had with it and finally he got tired of it and sold it uh yeah. super unfortunate but I, we can only understand i mean imagine yeah. getting pulled over every single time oh, yeah oh, if yeah. he's a gentleman that doesn't want to have that attention mm -hmm. i mean who does right right so, yeah exactly unfortunate okay so obviously you go through high school bam you know you, you're like, man, that could have been my car, but it's not. Yeah. What ends up being your first car? My first car was a 1980 Cadillac Coupe de Ville. Whoa. Right, so I still had that whole Oh, you didn't go, bug. oh, it didn't, it wasn't that bad. I don't yeah. feel that bad for you no more. It wasn't bad, <clears throat> but it was, it was, it, it was, was rough. ugly. It was rusty. <laughs> the, the interior, oddly, was nice enough, but it smelled like cigarettes and everything, <laughs> you know, and, and yeah, but I got that one for like a thousand bucks, you know, oh, okay. and you know, it, it had some little bit of issues, but it was running, driving. Uh -huh. I remember pulling into high school, a big old cloud of smoke behind me, <laughs> you know. Well, and, Frank is here. <laughs> right, yeah, so they knew. They, I had, I, as soon as I got some money, I put a set of McLean's on it. You oh, know, back nice. Back then, were kind of the thing. So uh, it, was, it was fun, but same thing. Got me the attention, and after a while, I had to get rid of that car. Yeah, you know? get rid of that. Yeah. Okay. And then what else do we stumble upon? What, what else do we buy? Oh, shoot, I've had a, a 83 Buick Regal. Okay, do you get anything above 90s or 2000s? I mean, no, you just, man, I couldn't afford it. You just don't it, like, man. you don't like automatic windows, you nah, know, man. power seats. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, uh, like the Coupe de Ville had power windows, power seats. Oh, okay, okay, the there Regal you go. had power windows, power seats. Oh, there you go. I, I, I'm, I'm a little bit of a snob with certain things like that. Uh -huh. If I'm going to get a car and put money on it, I figure, let me get the best of it, the highest end model of oh, okay. it. You know, that's why like with this one, it's got to be the Super Sport for me, for mm. me, you know, because I like the bucket seats. You know, I, I had to get power windows in it. You know what I mean? I had to have the tilt. All those little miscellaneous things that, uh, that make the drive a little bit enjoyable. Because mm. I don't want to be reaching over all the time, gotcha, doing this gotcha. thing. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I want to be able to just hit some buttons and cruise. Okay, cool, cool. How do we stumble upon this beautiful car? All right, so um, years back, uh, I was in the Marine Corps. I had a, a 92 Dodge Ram, the little short, short van, right? But the full size looking one, but mm. short one. And I was doing work on that one and put my stereo system in it, you know, customizing the interior a little bit and put some 100 spoke rims on it. And, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I'm spending time and money on it. At the end of the day, it's still gonna be a Dodge Ram. Mm -hmm. We're like, why not just pick <clears throat> up an Impala that I've been wanting, you know, put work in it little by little. And then when it's done, it's a 64 Impala, <laughs> regardless of which way I go. Mm -hmm. So I found this one on uh, the recycler ads. Mm -hmm. And that, this is, I've had this car 21 years. Wow. You know? So I picked it up, you know, no pictures. It was just a print ad. So I had to <laughs> call the guy and ask him about it. Drove, he was over in San Fernando. So I went over there, checked it out, and it was in pieces. The whole front end was off. All the interior was taken out. It was there, but it was, you know, taken apart. And uh, made a deal, picked it up for 2000 bucks. you know. And it had to be the 64 for you? It had to be. It had to be. Yeah. Is that like a tribute to the old car that Pretty you had? Pretty much. Okay. I wish my parents would have kept that one. I, I would have. Yeah, yeah. That one, yeah. We know you would have. You would have oh, just yeah. made it, you know, perfect. Yeah. And you said that the original '64 that your parents had, same color as this, right? It was a red, so like a more oh, okay, like a red, red. Okay, okay. And it was a solid one, one color. Where this one's two tone. Yeah. Okay. But it had to be a super sport for you. Had to be. Yeah. Okay. Had to be. Owning a car like this, I mean, it, it must be very terrifying having to drive it, and you know, making sure that everything goes out to plan. Uh, yeah. I don't know how you do it. Even just driving in general, like, you know, my boys when I started driving, I'd always be telling them that, that the thing with driving, you got to look at it almost as a game. You know, all these video games you guys play where, like, everybody on the planet, their mission is to make you crash or to crash into you, right? <laughs> so your objective is to not let them, you know what I mean? <laughs> not let them, there you go. Watching and looking and, you know, like, trying to predict what other people are Yeah, 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 do. definitely. Because I think I'm a good driver, you know, I'm sure we all do but it's other people I'm worried about, you know? <laughs> people that, because we see people do some dumb stuff. Yeah. Run a red light or, or, or start swerving into our lane on the freeway, whatever, you know what I mean? Yeah. Or like, what the heck, what, what's wrong with people? What was that, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, and that's what I'm worried about. Other gotcha. people driving like maniacs. Um, well, the dude I follow on Instagram too, uh, one, of, one of the younger tow bars, he got rear-ended in, uh, in his fleet line. Uh -huh. And his fleet line was still a project, you know what I mean? But it's, you know, clean car and everything. He got rear-ended, you know, wrecked this, we had to get another one. Luckily, he was good, his data was good, you know, and, you know, no crazy injuries. And then when I was talking to him about it, I was like, so what happened? Like, you were at a red light and somebody rear-ended you? He's like, no, I was on the freeway. I'm like, wait, what? How do you get rear-ended? How do you get rear-ended on the freeway? So he was on the freeway driving and apparently some 
drunk guy, didn't see his car, and just freaking pile went different. Yeah. I'm like, what the Horrible. hell? Yeah. So that's what I'm telling you. I'm gonna put LED lights <laughs> and whatever I can on any car I got to to make us more visible and noticeable. Yeah. I'm, I'm hoping not to get hit. <laughs> Which is talk about this one. Sure. Um, beautiful car. You said it was taken out in pieces, but most of the bones were there. Oh yeah, everything okay, was cool. there. So you didn't have to have like, you know, to go through the headache of finding trims and all these different no. stuff. Okay. Well, yeah, the trim was there for the most part. I have swapped out a couple trims. Like I swapped out the grill because this was a nicer grill than the one that was on it. Okay. Um, mm -hmm. Little things like that. I I did change the bumpers out. Okay. The original bumpers really weren't too bad, but when it was time to either chrome them or get a newer set, I went with the one piece. Um, a lot of people don't notice those little things. So this is actually a one piece bumper, which they call a California smoothie. The Whoa. original bumper is actually three pieces. Oh. And I did that to the front and to the rear. And the bump, the, the, the bolts, they're shaved off. So you don't see none of the bolts on them. Wow. <laughs> the details. And they, they sit a little bit, uh, they tuck a little bit nicer, right? A little bit, yeah. They're, they're not yeah. as bulky. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, Tell us about the color of the car. Okay, so the colors, I'm gonna give credit to my wife, right? She uh, actually picked the color scheme. Oh. So when it comes to things like that, I always go to her because you know she, she knows her stuff. <laughs> she knows I always gotta ask her, hey babe, does this shirt go with this? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, Frankie uh, may or may not be colorblind. Hasn't right? been, yeah, you know it what hasn't mean? been <laughs> the truth. Yeah, yeah, so and I, I got no shame in that, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> I love uh, that. that. That's why I keep her around. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, so she picked the color scheme. And so she said, go with like a, a burgundy-ish color, right? Mm -hmm. and, and she wanted uh, the beige roof. Mm. So when it was time to paint it, you know, I had her look at the little samples and she picked them out. Same thing with the interior. The interior isn't an original color, right? Mm. So it's, uh, it's the beige to match the top. And then the carpet is the burgundy. The wheels are two-tone with the burgundy. The speaker grill in the back has the burgundy around it. So the little, little uh, details are in that. And uh, we just kind of wanted it to match. But with me, I wanted the interior to be the original stitch pattern. I did swap out the, the rear LED tail lights. I put LEDs in the back just because they're brighter, mm -hmm. you know, and I want people to see me. Yes, yes, You know, yes. you see people posting videos about their car getting crashed or whatever. I'm like, ah, I don't want that to be me. So yeah, yeah. anything I can do to upgrade it, I'll upgrade it. Um, other than that, of course, I got the air suspension on there. You know, the bags, airbags front and back. I got 100 spoke Dayton's and these are actual Dayton's. I got these used. I can't afford new Oof. ones. Oof. And um, these are what they call the, the pre-stamp, the ones that were made like in the 90s. Oh, okay. And so they only have a stamp in the back of a number. Mm. That's how you can tell. And legend has it that the way you can tell that it's an actual Dayton mm -hmm. is if you look at the nipples on them, that all the nipples will be facing the same way with the flat side facing this way. <laughs> that's where that's look, a legend that that's a whole different deal of detail man that's yeah crazy. well if you look at like the the chinas which well, nothing against chinas i ran chinas on here for the longest time okay but with the chinas the nipples will be turned every which way oh i will show you this i almost forgot so this is one of my upgrades i made a little uh floater oh what yeah <laughs> so when the wheel spins the ss stays put and that's, uh, I, I got a couple little, little I, things yes, that I've done to the yes. car, and, uh, but most of it's unnoticeable, and sometimes I forget it. But yeah, I got floaters on every <laughs> corner. I forget it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you know, you forget what you've done to your car and all the work you put into it, right? Funny, you know, the whole idea that like, people that drive these cars are up to no good. Uh -oh. You realize that these cars, one, are, you know, compared to a modern car, they're slower. And two, they, br they bring so much attention. You think right. anybody with a beautiful car like this is gonna wanna commit a crime, that's exactly. Uh, it's like uh, it's a lime green Impala that did it. Like right. you can be subtle, you know. Yeah. And it's funny because yeah, they have their bad reputation, right? A lot of that comes from Hollywood. Right. You know what I mean? Like the, the set it off, right? Mm -hmm. Latifa running from the cops, doing dirt in a '62 Impala. Come on. <laughs> you know what I mean? Come on. Really? Yeah. You know, is it possible? Are there are there knuckleheads out there in any in any uh, hobby? Yeah. yeah. There's knuckleheads out there. You know, but part a lot of us are working our butts off saving money you know sacrificing to, to make this happen Definitely. so that we can enjoy this you know what i mean we're not we're not trying to bring that negative attention you know yeah 100 100 percent. i agree with you and uh i mean it it's like we're back in the 60s you know this car <laughs> it's so cool man it's right? like it's a different vibe yeah yeah 50s 60s like, and the car is really really comfortable even with bags right i like bags bags you know you get some issue from some of the quote-unquote traditional lowrider guys. Oh, it's got to have hydraulics, whatever, you know what I mean? But I don't want to butcher my car, you know what I mean? I like the smooth ride. I'm not trying to hop. 
I just want to, you know, just get up and go and then lay it out when I park it, you know? Gotcha, gotcha. I want that smooth ride. And what are the specs on those wheels and tires? So those are 14 by 7s, Ooh, 100 14. spokes. The tires are 175, 70 by 14. And that's about the size that you normally run with the radial tires, you know, as opposed to the 520s. Mm. 520 is a beautiful tire. That's the popular one in low riding. It's kind of legendary, but it beautiful tire, but it's, you're all over the road with those tires. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, they're, you're all over the place. You know, I had the, the, my first car, Cadillac Coupe de Ville. I had the McLean's <laughs> oh, for, for on previous there. experience. <laughs> I, yeah, I had that on there. I had the 520s, you know, and I'm on the, on the 605 and just hauling it and both my right side blew out. <gasps> I'm like, man, did I run over something or what? You know, in your big old car, it's a little tire, oh, yeah. you're losing it. So I pulled over and, and what ended up happening, I guess the car was just too heavy for the tires. Mm. They just kind of uh, blew out with pressure. There was no damage or nothing. All I had to do is just put air in them again and I was on the road again. Oh. So yeah, I, I don't trust those tires for nothing, especially if I want to get in it and just go. Right, you right, know, right. If you're just cruising, 520s are good to go. But I like to jump in it and go. Okay, gotcha. Beautiful, beautiful wheels, man. And Thanks, um, man. Now these are chrome, right? They're not polished, yeah. they're chrome. Okay. Yeah, all chrome, all chrome. I like I, the chrome with the red. It just, it pops very nicely. Yeah. And I do have the skirts, <clears throat> you know, they, they come with a skirt. Mm -hmm. I had them painted when the car was painted, but they really don't fit with these wheels on there. Oh, they don't fit. Yeah. And oh, the okay. legend had it that if you ran <laughs> actual Dayton's, you could run your skirt. So that's mm -hmm. why I saved some money and I found a used set of Dayton's. But this freaking legend was wrong, huh? Right, yeah. Like, <laughs> like I can get them on there, but I think it's too it's too close for my comfort. Oh, you know no, I mean? no, no, no. I would have to modify it. You or don't want anything falling off while you're driving. No. You don't want anything any damage. No. Because those, those, you know, skirts, they're very hard to find. Yeah, and yeah. And they're pricey. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they make aftermarket ones and everything, and, mm -hmm. and nothing wrong with aftermarket stuff, but a lot of times it doesn't fit exactly well as, yeah. the, as the original uh, parts. And I don't know why, but you just throw me off as a guy that wants original everything. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Don't get me wrong. I, I like the original look and feel, mm -hmm. but I like the upgrades, the modern stuff, you know? Yeah. So I like mean, I said, that's why I got my LEDs on there. That's why I, I put a power trunk on here. I, uh, power trunk? Power trunk. <laughs> the, the car originally wasn't a power window car. I mm -hmm. actually updated it. Once again, I just took everything apart and butchered it and used aftermarket motors and just mounted them on, fabricated some brackets and put it on and you know you learn stuff the hard way I learned that new old style switches don't work right with old old style switches don't work right with new style motors uh. so I have to run relays on everything so every window has two relays on it so that it works properly <laughs> cool, man. and then That's the crazy. vent windows th those are expensive too the vent windows I use the motors actually out of a <clears throat> Dodge Caravan so um, okay um, hold on hold on so the vent windows are which ones right here these right here yes yeah, so okay and those are, are electric powered. yeah no yeah they're also powered they, it was no, an option back then. You're, no, you're kidding. Yeah, yeah, it was an option back then. You <laughs> could put, you could get it with the power vent windows. Wow, but, okay. but the original ones, they're, they're pricey. And like I said, I'm, I'm over here balling on a budget, you know, balling so I, budget. I do most of what- So that's from a van? Dodge, Dodge Caravan. Caravan, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I pulled the motors out, same thing, fabricated a bracket, wired it up, and been working like a champ. Wow, that's freaking cool, man. I love that. Talk about the interior first, if you don't mind opening up sure, the door. Sure. Um, Wow, what a beautiful, beautiful interior. Super classy, Frankie. Thanks. I mean, so, repulsor everything. Mm -hmm. And now the SS comes, you say, with the bench, with the buckets, with the buckets, buckets right? Yep. A lot of people do the bench seat though, right? But you wanted the buckets. One of the buckets, gotcha. yeah. Okay. Um, man. And all the interior was there when you first bought it or did you have yeah, to? Yeah, it was all there. All, all, it was black originally. So uh, oh, okay. I actually went through, I painted the dash. I painted the column. The column what? isn't original. The column is actually an I did it column because I wanted to tilt. Oh, okay. And so uh, I put that on there and I just painted it to match. Uh, painted the steering wheel as well. You just had wow. a two-tone to you know go with the outside color scheme. Uh-huh. Yeah. Same thing with the console, painted that one to match. Put some kick panels in there with some speakers. Now, one of the coolest things that you told me, your suspension is actually wired to the actual original stereo, correct? Yeah, yeah. So uh, I want to keep the original look and feel, like I keep saying, but that old stereo, I wasn't going to use it. So I was trying to think how to make it functional. So what I decided is to butcher it, like I butcher a lot of stuff. <laughs> In and, a good uh, way, though. <laughs> and wire it up to control my air suspension. So the knob on the left does the front up and down, the knob on the right does the back up and down, and the preset stations are actually preset right heights. So the 
first one does the uh, all the way down when I park it. The second one will give me the low ride height. Third one I haven't programmed brand haven't programmed it yet, but it will be a high ride height. Mm. The fourth one actually opens my garage at my house, and the fifth preset does my sliding gate at my house. That's insane, dude. That's so cool. That's so cool. You're very creative. <laughs> You're very creative to say the least, man. man. Well, thanks, man. And then obviously one thing that we were able to, I was able to get on video. There's a light that comes out. Oh yeah, yeah. It's called a. It's called a. Uh, I heard different things like a puddle light mm -hmm. or a, a door shadow. I don't know different things that they call them. And uh, a couple years back when they first came out, you were limited on your options, so you pretty much you just get a logo. Because I think it was like BMWs or some of those uh, European cars. European cars those, that had that. Right? Yeah. So they offered it aftermarket. <clears throat> Only thing I could find was a Chevy logo. So mm -hmm. I had that on there. Had it on for a couple of years. But from day one, I'm like, no, I got to do something different. And I wanted that picture. There's a picture. Uh, I have it on my you know, Instagram and links. So I'll, I'll shoot it to you if you want. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a picture of my two baby boys when they were two and three years old standing next to this car when it was all primered. Wow. You know, at the time, we were living in a, it, my parents' pad. And so I was working on it in the backyard, you know, and fast forward all these other years. And they were actually helping me out with it. Like, wow. you know, they helped me lay like the sound deadener in it. My uh, oldest one, when he, when he was in junior high, he's the one that helped me program the right height because he was in the robotics club, so mm -hmm. he was telling me all about it. He programmed so that cool. up. So cool. Yeah. So cool. Some kids are like, man, I'm going to create these robots, going to go to Mars, and your sons are thinking like, damn, I'll make the <laughs> lowrider go up and down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You need to work. I love that, man. That's so cool. Well, let Just remember, it's not a show car. <laughs> mm, I don't know, Frankie. I don't not know about that. Not a show that. car. I don't know about that. Beautiful. Yeah, so it's a 350. Originally, it came with a 327, but instead of rebuilding the 327, I found a deal on this 350, and this, this, this bad boy's got some power on it. It's got an RV cam on it, so it's got a little bit of torque in it. Um, I put headers on it, uh, Edelbrock intake. I just recently upgraded the, the carburetor, well, got rid of the carburetor, and made it a uh, fuel injection. So I put the uh, Holly Sniper EFI. Mm. Love it. Wow. Love it. I, I don't ever want to go back to a carburetor. <laughs> yeah, yeah. With that Holly Sniper, it like woke it up even more. It it takes off. I have to be careful because I'll I'll spin those tires. Really? Yeah. And then um, upgraded the alternator to a 220 amp to power, you know, the compressors and the sound system. Just a big alternator? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Just just more amperage out of it. Gotcha. And then um, I also upgraded the transmission. Um, I had a 350 three speed in it, but I put in uh, the 700 R4. So it's a four speed with the overdrive, so I can be cruising on the highway. And these right here are actually the height sensors mm -hmm. for the preset ride height. And I have them on each corner of the car. <clears throat> I pulled those out of some 90s Cadillac out of the junkyard and I <laughs> ran those up in there. And that's so what somebody the, left them there before getting junk and then you just... Oh yeah, I mean, people don't think about their height sensors on a Cadillac or whatever. Mm -hmm. Usually at the junkyard, they want other parts. But me, that's what I went looking for because <laughs> I knew exactly what I wanted to do with it with the right height on it. And I need <laughs> sensors. Oh, uh, yeah. We all go to the Yunker for different reasons. That's so oh, yeah. cool, man. Oh, yeah. Man. So now, the, to tell me, because, you know, obviously I don't know much. Um, the original Super Sports came with the 327? 327. It had okay. a couple options, but okay. 327 was the more popular one. Okay. I mean, the, the, the treasure chest one is that you get the one with the 409, but... Those are hard to find and they're a lot of money. Yeah. A lot of money for those. Okay. But yeah, no, most of them came with the 327, which is almost identical to the 350. You okay. know, 350 just got got more uh, uh, cubic space in there. Mm -hmm. But now the 350 seems to be the most popular oh, one. Oh yeah, they're easy to work on. You can find parts <clears> in them all day long. Yeah, it's real, and they're real reliable when they're done right. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Uh, major plans for the engine compartment? I've still been thinking about maybe an LS swap. Oh boy! But uh, come on, Frank, you can't do that. I'm not there yet. You can't do that. That is the world, right? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, if anything, if you're spinning tire right now, come on, you're gonna really yeah. spin tire later. Th that's why I didn't pull the trigger on the LS swap. It was uh, more financially sound to go with the fuel injection on mm -hmm. this one because the motor is healthy as heck, you mm -hmm. know. So I figured, let me just get the fuel injection, and I love it as is. So I'm in no rush to change that out. If anything, I might go with the electric fans on it. Okay. Yeah. 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 But then that it's been healthy. It's been oh good. yeah, no, it's been great. I drive it anywhere and everywhere. It stays nice and cool. Mm. I, yeah, I have never had no issues. Knock on wood. My, my yeah, love. Yeah. Now that I said that. You know? now that I said <laughs> <laughs> no, it's good. I mean, it's 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 great. I think that's so cool that this car is still on the road. You know, after all yeah. these these years and stuff. And and then now you're already thinking, 
you know the LS is a great great motor and they're reliable they yeah. right off the box they have a lot of right. power and a lot of people obviously are running in different you know chassis so mm -hmm. the aftermarket support is going to be there if you oh, yeah. you know in parts and things like that so you know that that's a great um you know replacement as we move forward into the yeah. older years where these motors are going to be harder to find and parts are going to be hard to find yeah as time goes by right yeah mm -hmm. wow this is great man yeah, i appreciate thanks. it but yeah man yeah, it runs so smooth. It sounds like your car is really, really healthy. Oh, yeah. No, it's, it's, it's yes. like I said before. I mean, we got to get it running like a champ first, make it reliable, make the brakes updated. That's why I have these brakes on it, you know, everything, because it's got to be safe, reliable, and then we'll make it pretty, you know? And that's what I told my son. That's why we did 68. We got it running like a champ. We upgraded the brakes on it also. So now we're at the point where we're doing the upgrades, making it pretty little by little. We swapped out the interior on it. And uh, we already got a EFI kit, so we're gonna put that on his next. And I just picked up the transmission also, the, the four-speed overdrive. So we're gonna do all the same swaps on him. And that one uh, hasn't been sprayed, right? What do you mean, uh, paint? Yeah. No, it's still primer. Okay, okay. It's okay. still primer. We're still doing some body work to it. Okay. He wants to go with like a dark blue, you know. Dark, dark blue? colors, you know, you gotta get them straight. All right, Frankie, thank you so much for making the time for us. Thank you, thank you so much for your service. Uh, oh, definitely appreciate it. And um, any shout outs? Uh, well, thanks once, first of all, to my parents, of course, my family, my sisters, because, you know, they were there with me growing up when they saw me falling in love with it. And mm -hmm. what they did kind of brought me to where I'm at today with it. Um, to my uncles out there, you know, they were all about that car life, so lowrider life, so that kind of influenced me as well. I gotta say thanks to my wife. You know what I mean? Any guy out there who has a classic car like this, putting time and money in it, you gotta have the support of your wife. Otherwise, mm -hmm. it's hard to do, you know? And there was a couple of times where, you know, money got tight and I was like, hey, babe, maybe we should just sell the car. And she told me, no, don't do it because you're gonna regret it. Love it. She's right, I would've regretted it, you know? Cause <laughs> like I said, I couldn't be able to afford this car if I tried to buy it today, mm -hmm. you know? So she saw the work I was putting into it and she helped participate when choosing the color. That's cool. Yeah, you know, my baby boy is helping me out with it too, you know, doing the work on it too. Oh, all right. So, and anybody else you've forgotten, you know, because there's so many different people. I mean, uh, there are, 20, I mean, 21 years. I mean, yeah, no, you're right. Because, you know, uh, you come across people that, you know, I had a buddy who helped me out with it, but he passed away since, you know, mm. and um, th th there's people that you make deals with, that you do trades with, you know, for the parts or whatever, help each other out with. And it, yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to miss, mm -hmm. you know, it's easy to miss people. I mean, it's, it's uh, yeah, yeah. hard to get everybody in there. Well, it's a classic, man. Classic <laughs> Thanks, man. And, and we love it. Um, keep cruising it and hopefully we see this car in the next 20, 30 years still cruising, man. I'll be out there, man. See you at the cruise nights. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much for your time. I appreciate Thanks. it. Thanks. No, I appreciate you. Thank you.